people, my people, comrades and friends, welcome to another episode of The Week with me, Comrade Fatso. And it's been another crazy week. Chiefs want to exhume the body of Robert Gabriel Mugabe, Henrietta Rushwaya seems to be continuing her gold smuggling ways, and we caught up for an interview with the outspoken pastor, Apostle Chiwenga. But first, this week, our president got Kazumbulat. Yes, our president said he was off to officially open the Kazumbula Bridge. He's got a thing for opening bridges, eh? Then he backtracked to say, I'm actually just going to attend. ED originally said, I will be joining the president of Botswana and Zambia to commission the Kazumbula Bridge. With the coming in of the new dispensation, Zimbabwe came on board the project and the bridge is now owned by three countries. But then the government of Botswana put out a whole press release to say, mm, not exactly. This is a Botswana and Zambia thing, but Zimbabwe, I don't miss up a guest list. Yes, Zimbabwe went from owning the bridge to officially hoping to join it just now. Anytime from now. Ah, now, now my comrades. I would take a look at the bridge itself. I mean, it literally curves away from Zimbabwe. I've never seen a bridge that looks more like it doesn't want to be joined by a country. This is what happens when your hurment just focuses on looting. The rest of Sadiq literally bypasses us with their future plans. Nonetheless, our prayers went to the opening ceremony, truly embodying the spirit of Kukwana Kwana. The only thing missing was ED pulling out his own pair of scissors and going, nye, 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 nye. Hey. Mosha <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 Chico, <laughs> 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 Woman, I got to talk to a guy. I got to talk to No, thank you, and I say, No, thank you. Eh, Mugundaga, they say, Oga Ita, Mumbeta Zuana, Ripo, we are Navo, Iowa, Oji and the Ako. Come in, I'm sorry, I was no Mushanda. We caught up this week with the outspoken pastor, Apostle Chiwenga, for a no holds barred interview. Comrades and friends, welcome to a very special interview. Uh, today on the show, I'm joined by the outspoken and controversial and very viral uh, pastor, we have Apostle Chiwenga on the show. Apostle, thank you for joining us, Abba. Thank you, Comrade Fazzo. I'm glad to be here. 
So Apostle, the first question I want to ask you is, what did ED do to you? I mean, does he owe you money? I mean, why are you so angry with this guy? So angry with him? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where you are getting that from me, but I don't consider myself as angry with ED. Mm. To the best of my knowledge, uh, Mr. Mnangagwa is the president of Zimbabwe. Uh, he's the leader of the nation, and I'm a preacher of the gospel. Mm. The gospel is not a personal project. It's pre-speaking the mind of God, and that's what I do. I don't have any personal feelings towards him whatsoever. Mm. Oh, uh. I which Kenya is abduction in Baba. You're not scared to abduct one because you know that often happens to people who speak out in Zimbabwe. I don't think an abduction is what I can be afraid of. I have gone through something that I did a waste that an abduction. I have got an injured body, a broken body, a wounded body. So. I don't think there is any space right now for a normal, a progressive-minded Zimbabwe to have But you, you, you know, you could make life much easier for yourself. You could just join Anna Passion Java and make money, or you could be, be like Hubert Angel and become an ambassador at large for ED. I mean, why, why, why do you, why, why do you speak out? I'm not in any way desperate for money that is coming through selling my soul. What we are talking about in Zimbabwe is something that is important for everyone. If there is somebody today who thinks that nothing is wrong in our politics, in our social economic issues, then that is not lucid. That person is not super. Those people who are mentioning um they have their own opinions and perceptions and ways of life. But as far as the Zimbabwean situation is concerned, it goes beyond a personal gain, a personal advantage. You have to consider yourself. If you are going to have money today and buy an expensive car, where are you going to drive that car when there's no roads? If you have a lot of money today and you fall sick, where are you going to be? are treated because the hospitals are broken down. So whether you have money or you have no money in Zimbabwe, there's no difference. We are suffering from the same problems. You know, I, I, I used, you used to be quite critical of, of uh, Vice President Chiwenga. It seems you maybe your criticism recently has cooled down somewhat. And were you threatened in any way by the state uh, that, uh, that led to this, you know, this uh, lessening of criticism? I have not considered myself as a person who is uh, an activist uh, objective in my work. When you hear me criticizing, I'm simply doing so because I'm convicted to do that at that particular time. But that's not my day-to-day -day responsibility. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself to have changed in any way. I think if you observed our platforms, we were doing an advocacy for the whole month since the 1st of April. And if you look at what we're doing and what we're saying throughout that month, you realize that we have not scaled down in our activities a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, you're related to Vice President Chiwenga. Uh, so my question is, what, what uh, are your thoughts at the moment about how uh, his ex-wife, uh, Mary Chiwenga, is being treated? I've spoken out, I think... Um, a few, a few months ago, when she was being um, held into the courts, even though she was not feeling well, and I spoke out and I condemned all those acts as inhuman because um, the marriage Wenga is a Zimbabwean woman. And if you remember, ZANPF, when they were campaigning in the last election, they put out billboards which were claiming that they are going to protect the girl child. So my reaction to Mary Wenger is not um, inspired by my relationship with her um, or rather with the vice president in any way. I consider my work to be much vast and much, much broader in, in terms of its 
um, its spectra. I should not be limited to those people that I have connections with or those people that I have natural relationships with. The word of God is not a tribal assignment, it's not a Chuenga assignment, it's a mm -hmm. world assignment. My assignment transcends beyond the borders of Zimbabwe. So what they have done to me Chuenga is unacceptable. It is a sign that our institutions of justice are, are tilted in the favor of those that are in power. And that is not acceptable. Talking about justice and, uh, and the rule of law, Zambukhev has recently pushed through uh, multiple constitutional amendments, uh, which are really weakening the, you know, the, the, the Zimbabwean constitution. So given all of these amendments that are going through, where do you see Zimbabwe in 10 years time? Hi, hmm. I can tell you today, if we are alive, we may be able to talk about this after those 10 years. Zimbabwe, I can, in short, in small words and in a short sentence, I can describe it as, as a vehicle that is driving very fast in the, in the thickets of the wilderness without a steering wheel. <laughs> there is no direction in our economy, there is no direction look at what the president said was his objectives and his goals in what he called his first hundred days in office and what he's doing right now there's no consistency at all they seem to have a life and a culture of telling people what they want them to hear at that particular time and they abandon it and start another project and nobody is questioning them as to say but when you were campaigning you said you wanted to do this when you went into power, you said in the first hundred days, we're going to achieve this. You never achieved that. And you're not coming back to tell us, if you face the challenges, what are you going to do to come back to those objectives? So, so Comrade, you're talking about all the, the haram skaram that the opposition is in, that the ruling party is in, the chaos. So if you, this is a hypothetical question, if you were to find yourself in a mshika shika, and you're sitting next to ED and you realize, hey, yeah, we've got at least one hour in this Mshika Shik. What would you say to ED? I think the most important conversation that we need to have right now with the president is that we have to find out from him how much uh, of a Zimbabwean citizen does he believe he is. I, I think from an observation of what he has been saying and what he has been doing, he talks and he executes his office like suddenly a foreigner who has been smuggled into the president. There is no connection between him and the people of Zimbabwe. He doesn't talk like he realizes that the Zimbabweans are actually human beings with the five common senses and they can also speak out and, and they have a capacity to decide what is wrong and what is right for them. So I would want to ask him, first of all, uh, to what extent do you consider yourself a Zimbabwean citizen uh, from an observation of his behavior? And the second thing that I would want to discuss with him is why is it that in Zimbabwe, there are more procedures that a person needs to go through in order for him to slaughter cattle than there are procedures required for somebody to be murdered in the streets. Mm -hmm. Why is it that suddenly under his watch, Zimbabwean lives are losing value more than they were in the days of Mr. Mugabe? So, Apostle, here's a, another hypothetical question. You're driving along in your car and it breaks down. Uh, so you can only call one of two people. Who do you call? Joseph Chinotimba or Job Sikala? One of them has to come and be your mechanic. Which one and why? <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, uh, observing and looking at their characteristics and their behavior and everything, I don't see them, uh, except if we are going to look at them at, a, at, at an institutional level where we say this one is from MDC and that one is from ZANU. I think that's when I can give an answer. I think I would rather choose Job Sikala 
because for all intents and purposes, if you have a broken down car, especially myself, asking help from Zanu PF people is asking them to send hooligans with cans of petrol in their containers. <laughs> so, so I can let Job Sikala know that he's got the, the job as the apostles mechanic. I'll, uh, I'll let him know after this. <laughs> I'll send him a WhatsApp message. Very true. So, so Apostle, we're coming to <clears throat> the end of this interview, and I just wanted to end with some some multiple choice questions, you know. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few questions, and you're going to tell me, you know, uh, either or uh, or neither for for whichever reason. So the first multiple choice question: Who would you do business with, Hubert Angel or Passion Chap? None of them. Okay. Uh, Dendere milk or a bag full of goride at Oatamu? Which of those two? I would rather go with uh, with milk. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we're not going for the bag of the bag of gold for that uh, Henrietta had recently sent to, uh, to Oatamu. Eh? Uh, finally, which do you prefer? A two pizza kana murio nema potatoes. Uh, them. I don't like chicken, I don't like potatoes. So what's your favorite meal, boss? My favorite meal is Sadrejiyo Nema Tumbu Nema Guru. Hey, all right, all right. So, so Apostle, before we wrap up the issue, the final, the final question, what's the, what's the way forward for Zimbabwe? What do you see as the way forward? Yeah. I think the first thing that we need to work on as Zimbabweans is to identify ourselves as a common people with a common goal in a common nation. I think Zimbabweans, our biggest problem is that we have uh, relegated and marginalized ourselves to the peripheries of more important issues by um, just ignoring and expecting some miracle to happen either from these fake of prophets or from the so-called international community. We need to know that we don't need Nelson Jamisa for us to save ourselves from this tyranny. We don't need, again, some uh, Mr. Mnangagwa or his protege to, to lead us for us to speak out, for us to meet as Zimbabweans and say, let's address our problem. Let us have our youths uh, focusing on things that matter and not chasing after uh, non-entities who are bringing, uh, claiming to be uh, very rich and, and, and driving in our locations. What is and I think it's also important for people to know that if you don't vote, you would actually have voted. Not voting is a vote itself. You mm-hmm. are voting for the status quo. You are saying you agree with what is there. You are agreeing with what the president is doing. So the best way to speak out as well is to vote. But we also have another problem, Fatso. Another yeah. problem, China and Equity. We are being asked to choose between the gun or poison when we look at the faces that appear on ballot papers. In most cases, we do not have proper choices as to who to vote for. We are faced between a bad choice and a worse choice. I think we also need Zimbabweans to come up and say, I want to be an MP, I want to be a president, I want to be a senator. Let us have young people vying for political offices. Thanks so much for, for, for joining us today. That brings us to the, to the end of the interview, but uh, thanks so much for joining us today, uh, Apostle Chiwenga. Thanks for making the time to be on the week. Thank you, Comrade Fadso. I was happy to be here. ED has officially gone full Mobutu Sese Seko. Yep, the Prez this week signed into law a controversial bill amending the constitution and strengthening his grip on power. The Constitution of Zimbabwe Amendment No. 2 Act gives ED new powers to extend the terms of judges who reach retirement age at 70 years old. It also scraps the running mate clause 
which Edie feared would leave him vulnerable to an empowered vice president, aka this blast. Why did ZANU rush these amendments through so quickly, you ask? Well, they wanted to give an early birthday present to Chief Justice Malaba, who was set to resign this Saturday, the 15th of May. So just in time, Edie was able to sing, We wish you many more. I don't resign now. We wish you many more. I just five more years. We wish you many more. Until 2023 at least. We wish you many more. Because I you know opposition that I don't need some time. Let's remind Chief Justice Malaba that he's supposed to retire this Saturday according to the valid constitution that people voted for in 2013. Send him a birthday card and tell him to go and rest. And if you've had enough of the attacks on our constitution, then go ahead and sign the petition to stop butchering our constitution. And then this happened. And the reason that uh, Emerson Mnangagwa wants to exhume the mortal remains of, of President Mugabe is because he has been looking for, for what is referred to as Chimboya Mambo, uh, which is really the scepter that uh, he believes uh, it, it will give him the, the authority to, 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 to be the leader of Zimbabwe. So E.D. is trying to exhume Bob so he can get a mythical scepter. I mean, who is E.D.? Darth Vader? Or is Bob Darth Vader? And E.D. is Luke Skywalker. So Bob is really E.D.'s father. I've tech man, enough distractions. Go and register to vote, my comrades. We now cross over to the weather report with Chennai. Thank you so much, comrade. Ah, this week was a sad week, comrade. We saw a serious downpour of lies near Kazungula. I don't want to say it by who, because I don't want to be beaten. But look at my map, comrade. Lies, lies, lies. Thanks to social media, we saw a sunlight emerge as the truth came out. Had it not been for social media, comrade, ah, that is a stream of floods of propaganda and lies. I'm going to my one comrade. So thanks to social media, but let's move on to our weekly focus. This week, again, it's not looking so good. Look at this. We expect, of course, we're expecting the constitutional amendment season to slow down, but as it slows down, it gets more and more authoritarian. And then on Saturday, on Saturday, there will be a cloud hanging over the country because Chief Justice Malaba turns not only 50 or 60 or 65, but 70 comrades, yes. And the funny thing is, he won't retire. It's like, ah, my one comrade. Back to you in the studios. Ah, sorry, in the kitchen. <laughs> Tinae, the weatherman, I'm out. Peace. Thanks, Tinae. In my favorite news of the week, cabinet blamed fuel availability for congestion in Harare. Eh? Oh, now I get it. Helicopter, they will tease traffic, not my portals. Or blame the hoodment for corruption and a poor economy. Oh no, okay, wait, <laughs> that one's actually true. Either way, watch our hoodment come up with a cunning plan to cause artificial fuel shortages in order to ease congestion. I mean, it's been a while without fuel queue fights. Ah, the good old days. This week, a Zimbabwean man was arrested at Oa Tambo Airport in Josie with smuggled gold worth more than 730,000 US dollars. And guess what? It was Henrietta's ex-driver, apparently. I see, he picked the wrong bag. I mean, comrades, where can I find these bags filled with gold. Why do I always pick the wrong ones that are just filled with hembe? It seems gold smuggling is our new national sport with team captain Henrietta Rushwaya at the helm. It just helps a bit when you're the niece of the president. We should be winning our gold medal anytime from now. Thanks for joining us on the week. Follow Magama TV on social media. I've been Comrade Fatso. You have been the people. This has been the week. Thank you. Don't get Kazungulad and Futsek.